my beautiful future dukes. So I'm gonna be doing a things to know before coming to JMU video. Now, I'm sure a lot of you have seen my last video and let me just say, I'm here to do an update because things have changed and I'm not just talking about my glow ups. I just did that one for fun, one random day in the summer after my first year and I did not expect that video to get 21,000 views. Some things have changed, some things have stayed the same. I also would like to redeem myself because the glow up has been real, um, really quick. This necklace, I have a little small jewelry business that I will link below if you want a necklace like this. It's really cute. So let's just go ahead and get right into it. So I started out preparing for this video by watching my old video very uncomfortably. However, I did watch it so I can know what I said and I can talk about things that I said in that that have changed and things that have stayed the same. So with that being said, I'm going to start talking about campus, like the campus, physical campus itself first. So JMU is a big campus and it, we are in the mountains. Harrisonburg is in the mountains. Like you will see mountains everywhere. It's beautiful, but the hills will kill you. You will be walking up hills all day, every day while you're at JMU. So just beware. So just keep that in mind when you're getting dressed in the morning, you know, if you want to wear some cute boots with a heel or whatever, just know that you're going to be trekking up some hills, girlfriends. There are buses um, to take you practically everywhere in Harrisonburg, not just on campus. Um, make sure you use the buses because they will save your life a lot. So there is a way to find buses online. You can watch my old video and I'll, that shows you how to do it, but I don't use that anymore. But I was talking on the old video about the bus app and how I didn't buy it. I bought it. It's $2. Like it's not that expensive. And while it's not like 100% accurate anymore because they changed Harrisonburg Department of Transportation changed their like routes or something. I don't really know, but for the most part, the app is still usable. Um, it's definitely good, still good for the buses that are that just drive around campus. So there's the ICS bus that stands for Inner Campus Shuttle, and that bus literally just goes back and forth between East Campus and Main Campus. Another thing, nobody calls the quad and the other side of campus, West Campus. That is so ugly. If somebody hears you saying that, they'll probably look at you like, what are you doing? Main Campus and East Campus. East Campus is where the Bioscience Building is, an E-Hall, East Campus Dining Hall. And then Main Campus is everything else, pretty much. There's no West Campus, just throwing that out there. Back to the buses. So yeah, the ICS will take you back and forth between both of those, both sides of campus. Um, one thing to know is that the ICS is 90% of the time is late. The bus app is, it's, you, for two dollars it's, it's good. Like you might as well get it for two dollars. Another thing about JMU's campus, other than the hills, is the death stairs over in Godwin. There, where Godwin the building, like right on main campus, that connected to the stadium. There's a set of stairs up from the bus hub that they're, they're bad, they're pretty scary. That you will die going up those stairs, okay? Another thing, JMU stays cold for the majority of the year. When you first get here, it's gonna be hot, obviously, but when it gets cold, it's going to stay cold till like the middle of April. Make sure you have all of your warm clothing um, cause it's gonna get cold. JMU cold is way different than cold anywhere else. I promise you that. We're literally sitting in the mountains. Like, I kid you not, the wind here is ridiculous. Like, I, I have never experienced wind like this before. It, I said this in the last video, and I will say it again. The wind will literally rip your face off. While I'm on the topic of weather, when it rains at JMU, beware, girl and boys. They're not puddles, they're swimming pools. You need to have bean boots, hunter boots, any kind of rain boots, any kind of waterproof pair of shoes that you ha that you own, bring them. Like you could make a pond out of some of these puddles that we deal with, okay? 
Not to mention there's that stream that runs through campus from like parallel to the train tracks and there's bridges and stuff. It's cute and all when it's just a stream, but if we get a lot of rain really fast, that thing will flood and then all of Godwin will be flooded. My freshman year, um, there was a flood. I was on East Campus, so I didn't see it, but that stream over flooded and all of Godwin flooded, the football field flooded, and it was like people were in like boats. Like it was that bad. It hasn't happened since then. Mostly because I just think we haven't gotten that much rain that quickly since then, but I think they're more aware of it now. Like they try to prevent it as much as possible, but it could happen. So staying on the topic of um, like the campus and stuff, um, just be aware that Jamie was going through a process of rebuilding right now and it is construction central. Like there's construction everywhere and there's gonna be construction everywhere for a while. Um, they have so many new projects that they're starting. They're tearing down so many buildings. They're making new parking lots and new parking decks and a new convo and all this stuff. So just be conscious of that. Like there's a lot of construction going on. I talked about this in the last video in regards to the campus. Um, it takes about, I lived on East Campus for two years. So it takes about 15 minutes to get from East Campus to the quad, depending on how fast you walk. I'm a pretty fast walker, mostly because when it's cold, I like to minimize my time in the cold as much as possible. But if you go from East Campus, um, past UREC, and then through the Duke Dog, Duke Dog Alley, the tunnel, you can get right come right out of there and you'll be right at Godwin and um that little intersection right there that's the quickest way down to get down to Godwin but if you're trying to get to the quad don't do that because then you have to go up the death stairs so if you want to get to the quad you go past ISAT um across that bridge cross the street into village and walk down that way through the village down to the other little intersection by um the convenience store and then you can walk up past Madison Union and that'll take you straight up to the quad. It, you can walk it, it's just, it might take you a little while. Just, just plan. Okay, so now I'll talk about everybody's favorite subject, food. Um, so there's a lot of places to eat on campus. Well, less now that they're tearing down two of my favorite places. So, I'm sure you guys know by now about um, trying to pick a meal plan. So, the meal plan that I had for the two years that I lived on campus was the 14 punches a week. And I think, I want to say like 250, 275 in dining. So, a punch is worth $7. The only places that don't take punches is like Quiznos and um, the little pod stores in, um, in, in E-Hall and um, like Starbucks, Chick-fil-A, and Dunkin' Donuts don't take punches. But a punch is worth $7. Um, you take it to any of the dining halls, you can take it to, well, I was gonna say Dukes and Greens, but they're tearing Dukes and Greens down. I think it's just the dining halls at this point, which is fine because they're fixing, D Hall is almost finished, the new D Hall. They had a D Hub that was like the little um, temporary D Hall, but D Hub, D Hall is almost finished. And I'm hearing that that's gonna have a lot of stuff in it. So you could probably, it'll pro they'll probably let you use punches in there. But you go to one of those places, you, you swipe in and it's all you can eat. Um, the food is good. It's just not like your mom's cooking, you know, like it's good, but it's like it's not that great. Like calm down people. Definitely way better than a lot of colleges and a lot of schools. And it's probably going to be better than your high school, but it's not like the best thing you've ever eaten in your life. So yeah, punches and then dining. Dining is like extra money that you get that you use that you can use along with punches. So if you go somewhere, I think there's gonna be a little, um, like a, a wing stop or something like that in D Hall. I forgot exactly. But there's gonna be something that's like attached to D Hall that you probably will be allowed to use punch, use um, dining at. So you have 270 something or however much dining, it depends on what meal plan you pick, but you have the dining dollars on your card and you can use those at um, Starbucks, Chick-fil-A, Dunkin' Donuts, um, 
and I'm assuming you'll be able to use it at the little wing place that they're putting in D Hall. You can also use dining at the all the vending machines. So while I'm still on the topic of food, there used to be Mrs. Green's and Duke's slash Top Dog. Both of those are being demolished. So you might have gone there with a friend if you were here before, or you might have gone there on their visit, but they're not gonna be here anymore. I think the best meal plan is the 14 punches a week because that's two punches a day. If Unless you know for a fact that you're gonna get up every single morning and go to one of the dining halls for breakfast You don't need more than two punches a day, honestly. So Another thing about e-haul is that e-haul brunch gets crazy. I did talk about this in the last video I haven't been as much this year because I live off campus now and I have um, five punches a week so much less punches, but It, it still gets crazy Especially around 11 o'clock because that's when people are getting up on the weekends and they're going to go have brunch You will be waiting in line. Just be aware if you don't want to wait in line. You need to go before like 10 30 or after like 12 30. I feel like e-haul brunch is probably the best Time to eat at e-haul like it's really good. It's just like a staple of your freshman year I know I was talking about Starbucks and Chick-fil-a um, and Dunkin Donuts Chick-fil-A is on main campus behind Varner House. Um, when you're trying to figure out how to get to the quad um, using the bus app, Varner House is the stop you'll use for the quad. Um, because you get off, it'll take you to Varner House and you just walk across the quad and there's all the quad buildings and the dorms on the quad and the actual quad. And then at the end of that big long walkway is um, Carrier Library. But back to my point. Um, Chick-fil-A is behind like right behind Warner House then there is a Starbucks truck and two other food trucks that are right next to Chick-fil-A um, one of them is a I think it's it's called like nacho poppies or something it's like a Mexican thing and then the other one is called fresh or no it's called fueled fueled and that one you can get it's like um, Asian food kind of you can get ramen they have really good ramen you can use a punch at those two um, food trucks and then there's the Starbucks truck which like I said you can use dining there or you can pay with real money um, and then there's also a Starbucks in Carrier Library which is the one that's on the quad um, and then there is a, a Starbucks on East ECL East Campus Library they tell you on your visit that you should be calling that library Rose um, to pay respect to President Rose um, but I'm gonna be honest with you, nobody calls that library Rose. Everybody calls it ECL for East Campus Library. But yeah, there's a Starbucks in there, and then I guess there's only gonna be one Dunkin' Donuts that's in SSC, which is the giant Student Success Center, which is the giant building on literally on the other side of campus, the complete opposite from East Campus. Um, you can't miss it. You can see it. There's one on the there's a Dunkin' Donuts on the first floor of SSC. SSC is also connected to the health center. So the health center is right around the corner. Okay, so I guess um, since I was just talking about jack cards, um, really quick, you can um, have flex on a jack card, which it's it acts as pretty much like a debit card. You put money on it, and then um, that's your flex account. So you have flex, dining, and punches that are connected to your jack card. Flex is just straight up money. Dining is like you can only use it for food, and then punches are punches. But you can put more flex on your card um, at these little kiosk things. Um, there's one in the bottom of ISAT, like on the basement floor of ISAT. There's one in Festival. There's one in Carrier. Basically what you do is you like put your card in and then um, hit the button that says that you're putting money on your flex account and then you just put in the dollars flex is good to have because there are some places off campus that allow you to pay with flex most of the time if they do they have like a big sign that says we take flex and then also you need flex to print anywhere on campus you can also use flex at the any of the dining places on campus too okay this next little tidbit is um, about getting around Harrisonburg freshman there is a way you can have your car on campus I don't know well, it's not on campus, but there's a way you can bring your car to JMU. I don't exactly know how, but if they tell you you can't, that's a lie because you can. Um, I don't know. You gotta f 
call someone and figure that out because I don't know much about that. But there is a way that you can have your car at JMU your freshman year. There are freshman parking lots that you can park your car in. Um, but you really don't need it because of the buses. You'll be walking pretty much everywhere you need to go. And then there's the buses that will take you anywhere in Harrisonburg that you need to go. Um, there's the Walmart that is near campus is you can walk to that Walmart like it's, you just go to East Campus you walk like through the parking lot festival parking lot paved path and it didn't used to be paved but it's paved now so it's even easier to get to Walmart you just walk down that path cross the street and there's Walmart there's Chipotle and stuff over there like there's a whole bunch of stuff over there if you're gonna go to the mall or Target um, buses will take you there and buses will take you home however if you get a bus that will take you to the mall make sure before you go that there is a bus that will take you back to campus because um, the buses stop running at the most random times on like throughout the week so there might be a bus that'll take you to the mall but there will be no bus to take you back to campus and it's not a fun walk <laughs> from the mall back to campus literally the buses are your best friend just use them Okay, so I guess next I'll talk about football games, everybody's, and parties, I guess. I might as well talk about football games and parties in the same section. Okay, so football games. I'm sure you already know, we go pretty crazy for football. Um, you get tickets for free, all the students get free tickets. But yeah, you just go to Jamie Sports website, you go to football, go to tickets, you sign in with your um, My Madison ID and all that stuff, and then you go and you reserve your free ticket. You should do this in August because everybody wants to go to football games. So in August, when you get, there's some email that they will send out talking about football game tickets for students. Go and reserve all of your tickets. If you know that you're going to go to all the home games or the majority of the home games, just go ahead and reserve all your home tickets. They'll send you all the emails, Put make a little folder in your um, email that says football tickets, and they're all there. You don't have to worry about it when the game comes. You, if you forget and you don't end up not getting one and you really want to go, you don't have to worry about that. Get them in August. I think it's like the middle or end of August. Just get all your tickets like that and you'll be good for the whole season. Um, I did that and it was so nice because every time people were like, are you going to football game? Did you get a ticket? And I'm like, yeah, girl, I had them since August. <laughs> Let's see, tailgating. It's something. I don't know exactly if tailgating is going to be the same next year because I'm pretty sure they're doing, I heard about some new rule that the, that the police are enforcing where we can't tailgate in Upper Convo where we, everybody used to tailgate, but I don't know if that was a rumor or if that was true. Also, I know that they're doing construction over there. So again, I don't know if that's where tailgating is going to be. But that's where tailgating has been in the past years. It's been at this giant parking lot in Upper Convo. It's crazy. I mean, there's food. Everybody shares the food. Um, it's fun, especially if you're with a bunch of friends. But I'm just letting you know it's, it's, a, little, it's a little crazy. People, people go a little crazy. The lines into the games are obnoxiously long. If you don't want to wait in that line or if you're trying to get a good seat or something, go early. Like you're not going to be missing much of the tailgate. You might miss someone pass out because they're so drunk or something. People who won't even make it to the game. But if you don't want to, if you want to get a good seat, go early. It's like two student sections kind of. The um, concrete bleachers on the side closest to Godwin is where a lot of students sit and then a lot of students sit behind the band. Um, and then parents and stuff and people who pay for tickets sit on the other side with the real seats. Yeah, I think that's all I have for football games. I'll move straight into parties. Now, disclaimer, um, I am an athlete and I'm not a huge party person to begin with. So take that with a grain of salt. Um, I don't go to frat parties. I don't go to sorority parties. I mostly go to parties, um with other athletes so I'm just this is just my experience anyway my point is everybody knows about the party culture at Jamie there will be a party Thursday night through Saturday night and Sunday night too if there's no school on Monday um, there are bars and stuff that people go to some of them are 18 some of them are 21 I don't know I don't like I said I don't really party that much um, yeah the party scene is pretty crazy like if you want to go out there will be something like don't don't worry there'll be something don't feel like you have to go out if you are not a party person because you're not missing much be 
um, aware of the police because they are fully aware of the party culture at JMU and they will shut parties down quickly. Like I said in the last video, especially the black parties, but all parties get shut down quickly, honestly. Um, apparently you can register a party with the police department and it won't get shut down anymore. Um, I don't really know how that works. I've never thrown a party for real, but yeah, just, you know, typical party precautions. Just go with friends, watch your drink, you know, the typical stuff. Pretty much my freshman year, I walked everywhere. If I was going to go out, we walked or we took a bus. There are buses, buses, there are late buses. They run late. They will run late on the weekends and take you wherever you need to go. Um, I feel like the freshmen now, like they don't know that for some reason, like me and my roommate Cedra took the bus literally everywhere to parties. Like it's okay. People do it. Like you can do it. Um, I think that's all I have for parties really. Okay. So now I'll talk about, um, my Madison, which is the like online website that you use to register for classes and, um, you check your GPA and your transcript and your grades and all this stuff. You can check um, how much dining you have left, how many punches you have left, how much flex you have on your card. Um, they put holds on your account if you don't pay something. Um, basically, my Madison has everything. Make sure you change your password when it sends you the email because if you don't, you will be locked out and you have to deal with IT people and that's annoying. There's this app, app called Duo and you have to get it to be able to log into My Madison and Canvas now. Canvas is where all your classes are. So where your teachers will contact you, um, they'll use Canvas. Um, you go there to you know turn in assignments. Um, there's uh, Teachers will put announcements on Canvas. Uh, you use your like regular JMU login for Canvas um, and your password will automatically change on Canvas whenever you change your password on My Madison. Um, but yeah, those are the two big websites that you will always be using our canvas in my Madison. Also your email, um, make sure you set up your email. Uh, they should send you in a, some kind of notification. I don't really remember exactly when I set up my email, but it's, it's easy. Just be, just know that you will get a buttload of emails all the time. So if you know you're supposed to be getting some, an important email from someone, you're going to have to look for it because you're going to get a lot of random spam stuff from different organizations. There's also the Outlook app. That's nice. It'll notify you. I didn't used to have it and it was annoying. It's to not have it. You should get it. There's a Canvas app. You can get that. And then the only thing that there's not is My Madison. There's no My Madison app that I know of, but you need the Duo app, you need Canvas, and you need the Outlook email app. Don't miss your enrollment appointment. I did not know really anything about my Madison. I didn't understand anything about it before my freshman year. And I didn't know that there was an enrollment appointment, but luckily I got all the classes I needed. Um, when you set up your um, my Madison, go to your student center, go to um, register or like is a button that says enroll. Go there and look and see when your enrollment appointment is. It'll be sometime in August. Before that, you need to go to enroll and then search. So you search for all the classes you need. You can go to, um, when you go to um, Springboard, They'll your advisor will tell you about the classes you need to take and um, they should help you find the classes you need to take. Before your enrollment appointment, go to My Madison, go to enroll and go to search and type in the classes that you're looking for put them in your in your shopping cart. Um, that way on your enrollment appointment, all you have to do is click enroll. Um, after your enrollment appointment, it's open enrollment, which means that everybody at JMU can enroll anytime they want. So just make sure you don't miss that. I missed mine my, my, before my freshman year and I got all my classes luckily, but it was scary because I didn't think I was gonna get all my classes because I didn't know what an enrollment appointment was. So now you know. Don't be like me because you might not get lucky and get your classes. Another thing about academics that they might not tell you is that you get two repeat forgives. So what a repeat forgive is that if you completely blow a class, like if you get a horrible grade, you can take the class over, use a repeat forgive code, and um, you will get whatever grade you got the second time is the grade that will go on your transcript and that is the grade that they'll keep that's the grade that will go toward your gpa you get two of those for your four years 
So keep that in mind if you mess up two classes your freshman year, you don't get any more repeat forgives and your classes are only gonna get harder. I don't know if they really tell you about it all that much, but you get two repeat forgives and you can use them. There's no shame in using them, everybody uses them. So I guess the last stuff I have is just random stuff. Um, the first thing I wanna say is do all your Frog Week stuff. You get one Frog Week for your whole life. <laughs> like you might as well do it, it's fun. Like it might be kind of annoying that you might be like, I'm in college now, I can do what I want. Just, just do Frog Week, it's fun. Like it's gonna help you, it's designed to help you like learn the campus. I can't physically take you around campus. I can tell you, but I can't take everyone around campus and teach you all these things that the, that the frogs can teach you. They're there to help you. The whole point of the week is to help you. There are some things that are mandatory, but your frog and your OPAs will tell you about that. Another thing, another random thing is that nobody cares what you're wearing all year. Nobody really gives a flying F what you're wearing. You can look like a bum and you can look like a supermodel and nobody will care, okay? As long as you feel good, do what you gotta do. Um, if you're working this summer and you get like tips or something, I worked at a place where we would get tips and then it would just get distributed like throughout all of the employees. Um, ask for them in quarters so that you can wash your clothes in the dorms. Um, you can also use flex uh, to wash clothes, but I didn't always have flex. I had a bunch of quarters and that was easier for me to use quarters. So if you can collect quarters this summer, do that. The libraries get packed on the weekend morning, Saturday morning and Sunday morning, especially Sunday morning. They're full. So if you wanna get a good seat in the library, go early. Um, on the third, like the, the Libraries get quieter as you go up floors. Um, my favorite place to sit in ECL is on the third floor in front of the windows. Um, and then my favorite place to sit in Carrier is on the third floor. There's these cool little like cubicle things. I don't know how to explain them, but they're like cubicles. There's like parts at the bottom where you can sit, but then you can go up the stairs, these like mini stairs. They're like lofts, I guess. And there's a cool, there's cool little desks up at the top there. That's on the third floor of Carrier. Um, another good place to study is the top of Madison Union. Um, there's chairs and stuff out there. Also in Madison Union that I just found out this year, there's a meditation room. I, I want to say it's on the third or fourth floor with a giant window. It's just open. Like you can just go in there whenever you want. Um, it's really cool. Oh, also during exam week, I talked about this in the last video too. There's snacks. Um, Madison Union... The libraries I think festival they all have snacks I don't think I mentioned this but you can punch you can use punches and dining at festival there's a festival cafe you can use a punch there and you can use dining there forgot to say that when I was talking about food I think the last thing I really want to say is that it's gonna go by so fast like I know people are saying this is supposed to be the best four years of your life it's okay if it doesn't feel like that you have so much more life after college but at the same time enjoy it or at least try to enjoy it you're go you are going to be stressed out you're gonna lose your mind JMU is kind of OD for I don't know if they're trying to prove themselves people try to compare JMU and UVA and JMU and Tech JMU stands above all else just throwing that out there go Dukes we're the best however you're gonna lose your mind because these classes are hard and these professors are hard so, you know, try to enjoy it. Don't, like, it's gonna be hard. Like, it's gonna be a challenge, no doubt. But also try to enjoy it. Don't get yourself too down. Work hard, but also play hard. Um, because these years will go by very, very quickly. Like, I know I sound like your mom and dad, but they will. Like, I never understood how people say time flies until now. Like, until I got to college. Like, I, I'm about to be a senior. I kid you not, it feels like I moved into my freshman dorm in Chesapeake Hall last year. You know, save for the moments because it's gonna go by like that and you're gonna be a rising senior and it's gonna, you're gonna be like, what, what in the, where, why, how, where, when. You're gonna be asking all those types of questions. I think that's all I have. Um, if you have questions, please, please ask me in the comments. I'll answer them as quickly as I can. Um, you can also DM me, I guess, on Twitter and Instagram. They're both public. 
Um, it's the same as my um, name on here, Jaja Jansen, T before S. My Instagram has two underscores at the end. My Twitter does not, I don't think. Um, also, sorry for getting this up so late. Finals week is crazy. And the week before finals week is crazy. But it is up now, and I hope you guys learn something from it and enjoy it. So, yeah.